Alrighty peoples, this is Ross. So in today's video, I'm quite excited because in today's video, we're going to talk about the varieties of figs that I'm looking forward to this upcoming season. Um, we're going to be fruiting probably the majority of our new experimental varieties, and we're going to get a really good glimpse into how they perform, how they taste, really getting that overall awesome experience that you might be able to find in a different variety of fruit or a different variety of vegetable, let's say. Um, it's really all about that experience. It's part of the, the joy of all of this. And certainly, we are going to really struggle uh, if we don't allow the trees to get the right light penetration. Why do we need to care about that? Well, if we have the right light penetration into the trees, the, the branches are adequately spaced. Maybe there's an open center to our tree allowing the the light to come into the branches uh, then we'll actually have good fruit set um, it's really when i think production is largely driven by light because if you look at a lot of the evidence that maybe i was mentioning this prior season in the summer um, about the light penetration and how densely packed my trees are um, then also how many shoots are coming from the base it really creates a very dense canopy that doesn't allow a whole lot of light to enter the center of the tree, or even for each individual branch to get the, the adequate amount of light to actually set the fruit buds. In fact, some evidence uh, backing up my claim is that Pons in his book, uh, Montserrat Pons, by the way, one of the, probably the leading expert in the world on figs that's currently living, has mentioned in his book that you will not get the fruit set along the branches if you don't have the light available. So. That's why on lower branches on the tree, uh, you just won't have the uh, the fruit set you're looking for because the lower branches on the tree usually don't have the light uh, that's available to them. So uh, certainly we're going to increase our chances, I think, this year as we have probably have done much. We're going to do much better this year than we've done in prior years. Uh, in terms of getting all of the new varieties to fruit. I would expect actually almost all of them, maybe 90 to 95% of the newer varieties to fruit simply for the reasons I just stated. The only difference or the only way I'm probably not going to see some varieties fruit this year is if maybe something happens, they get off to a bad start to the season. Maybe we have a very cold spring. Uh, maybe it's just that the variety itself is very late and therefore it doesn't have enough time to actually ripen within my season. But for the most part, I would argue that uh, we shouldn't have any problems uh, with some of these varieties actually setting the fruit and then, of course, ripening the fruit if they indeed set the fruit by a reasonable date. So this year I'm you know, very hopeful to actually in this video when we're going to talk about these varieties and, and seeing them fruit, I think there's a good chance that we're actually going to see them fruit. Like, uh, I would say maybe in prior years uh, when we did a video like this, maybe I'd only see about 50% of them fruit or 60% of them or 70% of them, somewhere around there, maybe 60 to 65% of them would fruit. In fact, I still have some older varieties maybe that are not necessarily so new because if you've looked at you know some of the videos we did this summer, guys, here's actually my experimental garden or fig orchard section of the patio and that all these smaller trees that are of interesting varieties are brand new to me, whether I maybe I rooted them this past winter or maybe I rooted them the prior winter. So these trees are really only a year or two old. I still have some maybe trees that are maybe three years old or maybe even four years old that, believe it or not, haven't actually fruited or haven't gotten to see the fruit. So, I mean, there's very few of those, but you know, it, depending on the age, it doesn't necessarily matter. We're still going to talk about the varieties that I'm really just looking forward to seeing them actually fruit to get that experience, um, to evaluate them, right? To see how they perform, to see how they taste, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a really good shot. I think this year, let's start off with our spreadsheet here. If anyone's interested, it's down in the description of any of my videos. You can go and see this spreadsheet at any time. And this is really the list of figs that I'm growing here. You go down to the bottom, it's the My Figs spreadsheet. And let's start here at the top. We'll go down a wren. 
This is one that um, I don't know if I'm going to see this one fruit just because of the size, but I believe it is. It's got some size to it. And, you know, some of these varieties, guys, are so new, so new and so young that there is also, I guess, that chance. But assuming good light penetration on the tree, I don't see why even a young tree won't fruit. But if I go to Thierry's website as an example, he was the finder of this. Can't even find it. Actually, I think this one's somewhere on Facebook. If I, if you search for it on Facebook, you might be able to find it. A Ren fig. Let's do a little Google search here. No, it's not coming up. But I know he did have photos of it on Facebook. But it's it should be an interesting fig because it dries pretty well on the tree. And uh, it's a black fig with a red interior. Um, I believe this one comes from somewhere in the Bandol region. Um, and of course in that Bandol region, they really love their dried figs. And this is just one of them that comes from that area of the world. Um, so I'm looking forward to some dried figs. Any figs that have drying capabilities, as we've mentioned, are just superior to really any other fig, um, here in this climate. Um, as a Zlodo Zold, this is a, <laughs> a fig that's, uh, I believe has a Hungarian name. And we'll go to uh, a friend of mine. He has a Flickr page here, which actually has this variety in it. This is the only way I've been able to find it. Um, photos of this particular variety. So bear with me as we find some of the photos of these. There's, there's actually a lot of varieties, guys, that we're going to cover. I think this is what it's called here. It's called uh, drying on the tree green. So whatever this word here, however you pronounce it, I'm sorry to anyone out there in Hungary, uh, this translates to drying on the tree green, I believe. So you can see here, it dries pretty darn well. Of course, Hungary and uh, where these figs are being grown is is quite dry in the summer. So there's a, a lot easier of a potential to see dried figs. But if it has drying potential like this, it should have good drying potential here, potentially, right? It's all drying potential. So... Um, if it's going to dry like this, it's going to be one of the best figs, uh, that I can grow. And I, I feel like there's a photo of it somewhere and yeah, not seeing it, but maybe if we come back to it in this, this, uh, this thing here, we might actually see a photo of the inside somewhere. I don't remember what the inside looks like. I'm not even sure if I've ever seen the inside actually. Uh, it's simply the fact that the shape of it is enough for me. Um, no, yeah, I think that's roughly it here. It's really about the shape. It's such an elongated shape, which makes it really resist splitting as an example. Um, and then of course it has the drying capability. So for me, it should be a really good tasting fig. What else are we looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more barb alone. And I know we did a video on this. Um, you can go back and actually see this video here. Where, why is it not showing up? Well, maybe we didn't do a video on this, but I swear we did. Um, point is, is that it's a, it's really a dark skinned mutation of white Marseille. And I become a very big fan of white Marseille. Um, to be honest with you. So a black skin version should be a, f a version that actually has more um, potential for it to actually um, be marketable, right? Because usually the lighter skin figs like White Marseille, which does actually have some decent uh, commercial potential, it is light skin and therefore can be very easily subjected to sugar spots and it gets very ugly and uh, especially here in this humid climate and therefore it loses some marketability. But Barb alone is uh, definitely, I think one I'm very interested to see more of. Also very interested to see more of Barile. I know this one has fruited for me last year as well. Um, and I got a decent glimpse of the fruit, but it is a very interesting fig for sure. Let's continue on. Um, Bass's favorite is too small. I, I just will not 
get any fruit off of this. It just is really, really that small. I actually took it up out of the ground because it wasn't growing, put it in a one gallon size pot. I really should try to find cuttings of that one, but I feel like if I can get the one gallon size pot going, um, I won't have to, maybe I'll have to rejuvenation prune it. It's going to be a few years <laughs> probably before I'm going to see fruit off of that. Unfortunately, let's keep going down black Celeste. Uh, believe it or not. Yeah. I have not seen fruit off of black Celeste. And I have to say, you know, I just saw some photos actually on FigVid from my friend Carla who's selling, uh, sticks of this variety. Look at that. It's a Celeste styled fig, as we've mentioned in other videos. It's elongated. It's got that pyriform shape that we're all looking for in humid climates. But the pulp is very dark red, and it's got a great flavor to it. I've spoken to a few people um, that have fruited it and really rave about the uh, the flavor of that one. I don't see why not, right? It really deserves more attention. Um, looking forward to seeing Black Greek from Dennis Johnson as well. And this is a, as Dennis describes it, is an early black Madeira. So I think it might be similar, and I don't know for sure just yet. I think it might be similar to Borges Oak Grease, Violet Sapor, uh, Socorro Black. We'll have to find out and see. Um, but certainly he raves and raves and raves about this fig, so I don't know why I wouldn't be excited to see it. Um, there is some photos of it somewhere. But I think we could skip that one for now. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Let's keep going down the list. Black Zadar. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing fruit off of this one. Yeah, I fruited it. I uh, confirmed that it's true to, to type. Um, but didn't really get a good glimpse of the fruit. So this one is such a weird shape to it. It's like a a saucer um, and it's really flat and because it's so flat uh, I think another way another term to describe the shape of this is oblate and you can see just how flat this is and some of them are just so flat that you and they have a big eye that you kind of wonder you know if it really is going to work out um, in this climate I, and I, I've kind of been like here's a so here's a photo of the eye right there. So I'm kind of really not very high on this variety for this climate, but I really want to see it fruit. I really want to see what, what it tastes like because here's a photo of it actually grown in California and that just looks incredible. You know, um, if the photo will actually not be blurry for us, but that that's an incredible piece of fruit right there. Uh, that I believe is quite unique. So certainly somebody in California might be very interested to, uh, to grow that one. All right, let's keep going down. Man, some of these I've already gotten rid of and I haven't even read it. I haven't even, you know, put the red line across from them. Uh, like uh, Blava Campanera. I do I think I decided to keep this one actually. So it what I did get rid of it. Then I decided to recover it. Um, but I think I've even gotten rid of it. Yeah, I think I have. So I have to double check on that. But I'm pretty sure. And what I'll do is if I I'm not growing this variety anymore, I read it out like this. And usually there's a good reason. Uh, Black Beauty 10 as well. But, you know, just because I, I get rid of something, guys, doesn't mean it won't do well in your particular climate. Black Province, I mean, there's a number of these. And I'll have to take some time to actually do that. Blava Floor is a new one that I hope to see fruit. Uh, we can go to Pons' website. This is a fig that does well in early season climates just because it is an early fig. Um, I would say this one's better than the Campanera, personally. I think it has a better chance i didn't like the campanera all that much it's got a decent shape to it um, not the best but you can see it's pyroform slash turbinado if it gets more to the pyroform it shouldn't split as often and it's that's what pond says it does resist splitting it does resist the rain and of course it ripens here 
um, mid-August, which is a good date for a fig. Uh, it should be about should be about somewhere in the mid-season range in this climate here. August fifteenth is usually about mid-season. All right, so uh, and that, but believe it or not, that does translate over to my own climate. So even though this is in Majorca and these are the dates in Majorca, um, this if you read his book, you can kind of get a full understanding of what these dates really actually mean, and um, for certain, this will translate well to my own climate, as I've actually experienced believe it or not, many times now uh, with other varieties that, that ponds grows. And, they, and the dates always translate over well. Um, okay, so looking forward to these different blue celeste types. We have one that's a blue celeste unknown. We'll get more down the line and talk about which ones, like uh, the one for my buddy Bill, which is a young tree. We might get to see some fruits on it. I, it's pretty unlikely, but it's possible. Um, the problem is, though, guys, is that with some of these varieties, and it's nice to be able to get fruit when the trees are so young, but the quality is just not there all the time. And it's a shame uh, because you've spent maybe a year or two to get the fruits, and then you get the fruits, and they're really not that great. So really focus on controlling that water. That's going to get you the best fruit quality possible. I would say graft whenever possible. Keep them in as much heat as possible. You know, give them the right conditions, ripen them at the right time of the year, and that's going to be your best shot at getting the highest fruit quality that you can off of a young tree. It just takes a long time, I think, for, for younger trees to get their root system more established so that they're not just sucking up tons of water uh, and ruining the fruit quality. All right, let's keep going. By the way, highly recommend or anyone in California – Try to grow this variety here, Bordeso Blanca Negra. It should do really well for you there. Uh, looking forward to more Brianzola Rosa. We did fruit it this year, uh, but this one's got a high reputation. It's a really widely grown Italian fig uh, with an awesome caramel flavor. It should have an interesting flavor group um, that might be somewhere between caramel or light honey. So it might fulfill some weird category. And by the way, it's really, really early. It's one of the earliest figs that exists. Um, looking forward especially to tasting this fig here. It's called Brocolette. And it's another Pons fig that is, of course, a, uh, a Coldenom type. doesn't have the name Coldenom. Maybe it doesn't always have the neck, but uh, from what I've heard from this particular variety, and uh, and you can read about it and from respectable people in the community, um, it's got a really good coldenom-like texture to it. So it's very dense and thick. Um, and for me, it seems like a no-brainer. You know, resistance to the opening of the eye and resistance to rain, which is in Spanish here, but uh, actually it says medium resistance to the to the rain and actually medium resistance to the rain and medium resistance to the opening of the eye. So not the best, but, um, you know, worth a shot for contention of like trying to get a fig that can eventually replace the cold anoms, which at this point is the, uh, the De La Roca. Um, but any fig that can be in this little competition to fight for this category of best cold anom, is a uh, is a good thing in my book. So, the uh, De La Roca is my personal favorite, and really probably my ninth best fig. I think I did my top eight figs, but if I had to put a ninth somewhere in there, it would be this one, um, just because of how good it is, the rain resistance, the split resistance, and the drying capabilities of that variety. All right, let's keep going. We're looking for more of these. Lorenzo, I think I've kept this one. I'm looking forward to seeing fruits of that because any Brojoto Nero has got high fruit quality to it. I finally air layered it off this Brojoto Nero rootstock and that rootstock just has never done well for me. Ever since I got that tree, it didn't do well and I ended up using it as rootstock and that was a mistake. It's a good learning experience. If the tree isn't doing well, don't use it as a rootstock. You got to rejuvenation prune it, get it healthy again, and then graft onto it if you want to do that. Or you can just recover the variety. Um, what I probably should have done is 
knowing what I know now, rejuvenation pruned this Brojoto Nero tree, let it grow and let it re-sprout and let it see if, uh, if I can get some fruit off of it. And probably just enjoy that variety for a while. Uh, let's keep going down. Brooklyn White, I'm excited to see. I did dig it up, and it's going to be in a pot, but I feel like I'm going to put it back in the ground and see really what it can do. I know my friend Tony loves it. I'm sure it's got a good flavor to it. I know some people don't like it. I don't see why exactly because uh, a lot of these figs like Brooklyn White and White Triana, they're great figs, but you have to let them ripen for a very long time. And unless you pick them properly, they're just not going to taste very good. I saw my friend Steve, his tree of this that's in the ground in Maryland, and it looks spectacular. He didn't have good things to say this past season, but 2009, I was really impressed with that with that fig, at least looking at his tree of it. It looked really good. Bergen Unknown. We should finally get a taste of this. And we did taste Bergen Unknown from my buddy um, Brian. So here it is right here. We did a review of this. This was probably one of the best tasting figs I've ever eaten. And it was just... The, you know, obviously the variety is very good. It's very complex. It's got a really nice figgy flavor. There's some caramel in there. And it also has really good berry flavors to it. Um, I guess the, the really there is a problem, though, with it is that the shape of it is not ideal. Um, it will split here. It will probably crack here. Um, it's not caprified here. However, it is early. So we'll see if the flavor translates well enough to warrant keeping it. But I would probably guess that it's not going to do well here. Um, however, very much so looking forward to the flavor um, off of that variety. Finally, it's getting some size to it. This tree, it took a, the first year I had it in the ground, I just stuck a cutting in the ground and it rooted. But it took a while for that cutting to really get established. Last year it got somewhat established and this upcoming season I'll see some fruit it'll establish itself a lot further I'm sure of that uh, but yeah again super super tasty variety for anyone in California uh, looking forward to seeing Calderona okay I mean how could you not Calderona though I'm not very high on how it's gonna perform here but it, it does have good disease uh, I'm sorry split resistance and rain resistance however it's it's just not the best you can tell by the shape the shape is more um oh it does say pyroform so if that holds true then it should be okay but this is quite flat and i would not argue that that's pyroform so i think it depends on the the fig but um what's even better i think that people don't necessarily know about with calderona is that there's a calderona de minor which is a sub variety if you read Pons's book it's a sub variety of calderona which i believe should do well should do better here um than calderona so this is a great i think going to be a great different option for anybody in a a more humid place you probably shouldn't even be looking at calderona you should try to find calderona de minor and of course you can read about it and it just should be better overall for this climate um, however it is a, a, about five days later as Pons has it here but to me that's not that important it's really all about that that rain resistance and split resistance and it should be much better this is one of Pons' favorite figs by the way so how could you not and a lot of people love it how could you not be excited you know uh, let's see here I don't believe I even have this variety, Carabaceta. So uh, my potato is just too small. Probably won't fruit. I have to rejuvenation prune that one. It's not very healthy. Let's keep going. Looking forward to seeing the Coldedom Gigantina, as I said, with uh, Brocolette, is that we're trying to compare a lot of these Coldedom types. And there's another one. It's a just a very, it's a larger Coldedom Blanc. That really all it is. It seems a lot healthier too which uh, if it's larger and healthier, more prolific, more productive, it should eventually, I guess, replace my Col de Dom Blanc. We'll have to see how the flavor compares. And of course, it is possible to rejuvenation prune, which I've done uh, on my Col de Dom Blanc, to then make it healthier. 
Um, so I don't necessarily know if I'll ever get rid of this Col de Don Blanc because I don't know if there's going to be a fig like that that I ever taste ever again. It really is the thickest pancake battery, amazing textured fig. Uh, same thing with Col de Don Mutante. We should actually get a taste of this one too. My friend Raphael raves about it. I think he was the one to really make this one popular. And without a doubt, it should do really well here um, because people are even raving about the drying capabilities of it. So um, they're saying it's productive, it's prolific, it's vigorous, as a, you know, prolific, vigorous, same thing, I guess. Um, it's healthy. It's got um, a lot of production, as I said. So essentially, it's like a, it's a lot like, in my mind, a De La Roca because it also, believe it or not, has good drying capabilities. I've seen people post about the drying capabilities of it. So I'm making many copies of this um, to try to get many trees of it in preparation for uh, me actually loving it. Um, I don't see why I won't love it, to be honest with you. I think it's pretty unlikely. I would say if Raphael, my friend Raphael, who I probably trust more than anybody in terms of knowing a good tasting fig and a, and a good fig, I would say I trust him probably more than anybody. And if he says that it's good, it's good. Um, I probably would trust Big Bill almost right there with Raphael for anyone that's interested in that little pointer there. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, Colonel Lemon's Black Cross. Uh, we did fruit this one. It's just that we didn't get many, and I believe I think the squirrels got it. Uh, I confirmed it, but the squirrels, I believe, ate this damn thing. And it's unfortunate, but it, this should be a really, really tasty fig along the lines of a black Madeira, but better, better rain resistance, better split resistance. It has a better shape, right? It actually has a more pyriform shape and therefore is better with splitting. Uh, makes sense. I'm looking forward to tasting more of Conde. It's supposed to be a very good hardy Chicago type might be different enough to maybe not even put it underneath that umbrella. We'll find out. I'm hopeful. I'm also hopeful for a fig called Croses, which is under the same, uh, you know, thing for me at least is that it's under that hardy Chicago umbrella and maybe it's not, although I'm not growing that one. Uh, let's continue. Constans. This is a pastelier type. Looking forward to that one. Um, a bunch of my pastelier types. I'm looking forward to seeing them fruit. Again, they're they're really quite finicky in terms of their light penetration. So that's one variety I think it really does pay off to open up the, the canopy and space those branches. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't fruit. Let's keep going here. Uh, Call Noir, looking forward to see more of those to really definitively compare it to Sucret. Man, we're only at the D's here, guys, and we're almost 30 minutes in. Uh, I'm looking forward to, let's see here. I might see a DN and Amaros, which uh, all intents and purposes, I don't know why I keep saying intents and purposes, but let's see about this fig here. Let's look at it. Yeah, this is a high-quality piece of fruit right here. Uh, late to ripen, but pyriform, so it's got good rain resistance, good shape to it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this one's actually quite late. It, and even September 5th might be a little bit um, early for this variety. So this one's going to have to get some special attention. I may even have this one in the greenhouse uh, to give it a head start. I know my friend Pete loves it. Um, I believe my friend Pete loves it. I know my friend Carla likes it. It's a good tasting fig for sure. Definitely high quality. Uh, oh, by the way, it does remind me a lot of De La Senora Hibernenka. And I want to be able to say with certainty if it is under that category or not. And maybe that was just a thought and then I figured it out and actually um, decided it's not under that umbrella. I don't remember exactly, but... We'll know for sure when it does fruit, um, if it is under that umbrella or not. 
All right, so let's keep going here. Um, Delson Wami Gran. I mean, we've fruited quite a few of these over the years, but people really are starting to love this one. And I knew right away it had a ton of potential to it, but I haven't really gotten the best fruits off of it. Um, I've air layered my tree and propagated it and cut it like mad, and it just didn't really like that. Um, but this one's got really good potential. However, I don't think it's going to do well here. So a lot of people are really high on it for a good reason. It's going to taste great. It's going to um, really blow you away. I think it's probably one that you're willing, you should work, you should grow just for the experience of growing it, but it's got a Eurisa lot of shape. It's not going to do well here. And I'll be really surprised if it does. I know Pons mentions in his book that it should be more widely grown. So this is one that he's even recommending. Uh, he also thinks it should be more, has commercial potential. It should be more uh, commercially grown. So for the future, I may have a future with this fig, let's say in a commercial sense, but here in this climate, I don't necessarily know if I, I'm looking forward to it. The Demos family unknown is a, is a uh, unknown in New York uh, that a friend of mine, Raphael, um, I believe has introduced to the community. So that one looks interesting for sure, but it's very flat. And again, not necessarily too looking forward to that. We have the early purple Korai Lila, as it's called. This one looks incredible. Looks like it tastes fantastic. We also have, by the way, on this particular, uh, from the photos here of this Hungarian grower, Here's Kofeji, um, I think this one's, uh, man. Here's more Karai, Karai Lila, by the way. That looks like a really tasty fig, I must say. Early purple. But there's also, I believe, I'm growing Savarfuge, which is Moro de Caneva. Growing Salato, this one has got a good shape to it. Probably a more mild, flavor but i imagine it's probably pretty good also growing montalcino rosa which we'll get to and this one here has a more elongated shape as well so you can really tell um that it should do well here really looking forward to both of those fruits we also have if i look at some of these here piazzetta uh, this has got a great shape to it and good drying capabilities, so why not? We also have the Verdino Giacomo. And this one has really high fruit quality to it um, and great drying capabilities. I think this fig is probably going to be the best. This is going to be a really highly talked about fig one day is the Verdino Giacomo. Um, without a doubt, it's got some incredible potential to it. We'll see how it stacks up against some of the other figs that are green skin with a red interior, more of the Adriatic type figs, but this one really seems to have a higher bricks and uh, a good, a better drying capability to it. All right, let's keep going here. There's other ones that we could get to, I, I'm sure. Uh, looking forward to Emelyn's Purple. I may get to see some fruit off of it. I air layered the top off of it for my friend Vito. Um, so it's kind of a little stump right now, but we may get to see something. You never know. Um, that's a very sweet fig with a good shape. A lot of people like it. I know in, in a wide variety of climates, I have a friend really five miles down the road that loves it. Uh, let's see what else we got here is What else are we looking forward to? Nero Rocco. It's also got a good shape to it. Um, definitely does pretty well, I imagine, but it's on the later side, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we'll see. It's a black skin fig with a red interior. Very much so looking forward to that. Let's keep going here. Fane, this is a fig from Paolo Bologna, or at least his collection. Um, and Paolo Bologna, um, it's really hard to get some of the figs from him. So it's kind of a miracle I've even been able to attain this fig. Um, and essentially, 
it really has a good shape to it. It looks incredible. Um, really high hopes for that one, in fact, more than probably, I would say, 90% of the other varieties that are new. Uh, really, really good. Gayette as well. Gayette is a is a French fig that has a, a Dalmaty uh, similarity or similarity to Dalmaty. And you can see how it's elongated. It's got the void. It's got the long finger leaves. But it has more of a pear-like shape. The bottom's a bit fat. But if I go to Gayette, you'll see here that it actually is similar, right? It's got these longer leaves, not the same, but probably similar enough. It has a similar shape, right? Elongated, it's got the red pulp, it's got the void, but the shape is a bit better. It's more slender, it's not as fat on the bottom. And therefore it should be better with splitting than any other Dalmaty variety that I've come across. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this one quite a bit uh, to see what the deal is, because. Dalmaty is a great fig. It's really not talked about enough. It has a fantastic flavor. It doesn't spoil. A lot of people have problems with fruit set, but it's really about the light, as I said, the light penetration. So it should be rather productive. Um, it's a good grower as well, so I don't see why people shouldn't grow it more because it's got that elongated shape. It's got a decent size to it. And, of course, that elongated shape makes it really resistant to splitting, but... It's not impervious. It's not. It's not impossible, I should say, for it to split. It's just less likely. Um, and the fact that some of the dalmaties that you might see are maybe a bit fatter, a bit rounder, not as elongated, not as slender, and therefore they do split. Um, so it's a shame. But maybe Gayette in the future can replace um, all the dalmaties. Here's the Godfather fig for my friend Coop. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, it should have an interesting little flavor to it. It's got a weird colored pulp to it. Um, I don't think there's really anything similar to it that comes to mind, but uh, you never know. We might find out. Uh, the Golden Rainbow Fig. I want to try. I definitely want to have more of those. Let's keep going here. Great Black. I don't know if this one's common. comes from Harvey. Uh, Andreas before Harvey, I guess. And, you know, a lot of Andreas's figs are not common. So this one I took a chance on. Really looking forward to that, seeing if it fruits, because it looks like it's fantastic. Green Michurinska, probably looking forward to this one, again, more than like 90% of the other varieties. We did try it. We did a video on it, but I've seen some photos of it that really blew me away. Um, and I'm really high and hopeful for that one. Let's see, some of the Grease de St. Jean strains, I'm looking forward to seeing if they're gonna be better than DN Manel. Uh, so there's a big comparison between Loretta, Cateto, Grease de St. Jean from different sources, and then DN Manel, which we actually got rid of because I didn't like, uh, I thought it was a bit watered down in flavor compared to some other varieties. And in fact, Pons mentions that in his book, it has a more watered down flavor. So we're gonna find out if one of these is better than DN Manel, and it comes out on top as the best Grease de St. Jean strain. Uh, Grease Olivet is another one that I'm looking forward to. It's got more of a turbinado shape to it, but unfortunately, or I should say, so that's unfortunate because turbinado is not the best, but it's not also horrible. Um, it's got an interesting orange pulp to it. So this one is definitely one to look out for. And I think me people people should pay, probably pay more attention to it. Um, really getting a little weird with our peas there and our studying stuttering. <laughs> We're trying to I'm trying to go quick here, guys. So you guys get all this information uh, in a shorter period of time. Uh, yeah, orange pulp, nice colored skin. It looks like it's got great fruit quality to it. Definitely one to look out for. People don't talk about it for whatever reason. Uh, looking forward to Harry's Crete. You know, a lot of those Adriatic types are quite similar, though, so who knows. Impelazari, uh, this is an interesting fig. Can't say too much about it other than it's super vigorous, super productive. I think it might be similar to brown turkey, but we'll find out. 
Iranian candy. I want to see more of that one. My tree, I put it in the ground and it just has been struggling a little bit. But I want to see if the pulp can turn red on that fig. Let's see. The Iraqi unknown. This is an unknown fig from Iraq, I assume. Different from the Palmata hybrid version of Iraqi that no one seems to really care about or talk about. I know Will's mentioned something about this fig on our figs at one time. I think I even spoke to him privately about it. Um, I believe it has really an, a unique perspective on a honey fig. So that's what I'm interested in there to see is what the uniqueness really is about. Ashia Black, UC Davis, still haven't tried it. Know it's one of the best tasting figs in existence. Probably looking at this one, looking forward to this one more than 90% of the other varieties. It's maybe even the most anticipated fig that I'm looking forward to. I got many trees of it. They're difficult to establish. We grafted many of them. Um, a lot of them are very healthy to this day, so that's a really good sign. And we should see some fruit almost guaranteed. All right, let's keep going down. Juale Noir, this is one that a grower in Malaysia really likes. Um, it's got a good shape, should have a decent texture to it. Black skinned, uh, black skinned fig with obviously a Noir red interior. A commercial grower there in Malaysia really likes this one. So we'll see what his, uh, if he really likes it, then maybe I can start trusting his opinion more or not trust his opinion more based off of this particular variety. Um, all right, so let's continue here. Um, Core Black. This one hasn't been talked about at all. I think there's some good potential here with this one. I'm not too high on the Middle Eastern figs, though. Really uh, unfortunate. I know my friend uh, Simon is probably watching. His Simon number one and Simon number two. Looking forward to seeing fruit off of those finally. But I have to say, a lot of these Middle Eastern figs I've tried over the years are not really all that impressive. And I don't know why it is exactly, but um, just haven't really been a big fan of them. So hopefully I'm proven wrong with one of them. I did like Suwadi, but then it matured a bit and my opinion changed on it and I wasn't too big of a fan of it. Um, I still think it's a pretty darn good fig. It's worth trialing for people in like California and things like that, but um, I don't know necessarily. Maybe I should have gave it more time. Honestly, I don't know. It, it is a good. It is a good fig. It resists the rain really, really well. But it has a somewhat open eye and it tends to mold at the eye. So that's enough for me. I think. Yeah, that's enough for me. Uh, let's see here. Kufeji Black. This is the one that we were looking at before. Definitely has a, um, I believe this is Kafeji Black, but I'm not entirely sure. But you can see it's got a good shape to it, or a decent shape to it. It's got a void, good colored pulp. Might remind me of something in like the Black Mission family. Who knows? We'll find out. Um, La Bourgeoisie. This is again in the running for the Col de Doms. It's, uh, as Bo describes it, it's like a Col de Dom that ripens about two weeks earlier. So, should be about mid-season, if I had to guess, and puts out cold Adam quality. So that's really impressive, and obviously if that's true, it's going to be a keeper. All right, let's keep going. Lampira 1, we got to taste a couple of these fruits, but they weren't the greatest just because of the time of the year it was. This is going to be one of the best tasting figs I have for sure. I put it right up there with like uh, De La Roca and Col de Dom Mutante. I think in terms of that Col de Dom running of which ones are going to do the best, I, my money's on probably De La Roca, Col de Dom Mutante, and this one here, it's called Lampira. And do not be just, you know, um, do not be confused with the other Lampira figs, right? This one is a different strain of it that is common, doesn't require uh, pollination, and it doesn't actually put out Breva, at least as far as I know. Um, it's extremely hardy, as Thierry says, which is interesting. It does say it's by fairy, so it does put out Breva. Um, it dries on the tree very easily. It's got good size to it. 
good productivity. It's vigorous. It's healthy. Um, and it's got a cold adam like quality to it, as Thierry has described to me. Um, so it's a cold adam that has the ability to dry. It's very healthy. It's very productive, very vigorous. This should be a definite winner uh, for anybody that's interested. Look at that. I, I mean, how could you not like this fig? Here's actually the Breva that doesn't look very good. So I'm probably going to just take off all the Bravas anyway, if there are any. Um, all right, let's continue here. We're not even halfway done. <laughs> we got so much more to go, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can still be excited for some of these. We talked about Loretta in the Reese de St. Jean trial. Looking forward to seeing more LSU purple. Uh, looking forward to seeing Medina. My friend Ed likes this one. It's got a good shape to it. Looking forward to seeing Marin Gianna. Don't know if it's common. Hopeful. It's very vigorous. Um, extremely vigorous variety. It's uh, actually a Paulo Bologna variety. We also have Marsa Lazy, which I have very high hopes for. Probably won't fruit it, though, this year. It's still quite small and quite young. But it has extremely good drying capabilities. Um, one of the best drying figs in the, in the world. So very excited about that. Uh, Martinenka Blanca, which, you know, we did fruit this, but hopefully if we give it more space, more room, we get a better picture of it this year. Now that it's a year older, we'll see what the deal is. Um, if you go to Pons' website here and look at Martinenka Blanca, it's definitely a good choice for rain, humidity resistance, split resistance. Um, different than your Martinenka Ramada, you're different from your Martinenka. It's green skinned, red pulp, very, very good fruit quality. Um, highly looking forward to this one for sure. All right, let's keep going. We got Matsunita. Definitely looking forward to that. This one has like a purple pulp to it. Um, from Italy, very interesting. The Medieval Yavor. Oh man, this one, I been waiting very patiently for it to see if it's common and finally someone fruited it uh dan foster i believe fruited this one and this is definitely a very good tasting fig i would imagine and it has a good shape to it it reminds me a lot in a sense of like something like vertolino and salame which we'll get to down the the, the thing here but basically vertolino is going to fruit for me probably this year as well it's a very slender, long, green skin fig, kind of like Dalmaty, but very slender and long. Um, different pulp, different flavor than Dalmaty, but it's got a red pulp just like this Medieval Yavor, and because of that, it should be very, very good. Let's see here. We got Monaco, which uh, is an Italian fig that's really got a widely grown, it's really widely grown in Italy in a lot of the nurseries there not as high on that one just because of the shape and what i've seen so far i know paulo grows this one as well we talked about montalcino rosso the montabiolo unknown is an unknown fig from italy in the montabiolo region and this one is very similar to the cold de Dames. i actually got it to fruit it tasted a lot like the cold it looked like the cold it but it was very young and i had to air layer it off of uh actually i don't even know if i air layered it off that rootstock of marala but hopefully i get a taste of this particular variety i'm really unfortunate i can't get any darn cuttings off of it or propagate it it's just been a challenge with this this rootstock here, Marala, is really not healthy. So it's like the other Brajoto Nero rootstock I, I mentioned, which really affects what's grafted onto it. So it's a shame that it's taken so long, but Montebiolo unknown should be in the running for the Cold Adams, the best Cold Adams spot, I imagine. Um, at least I hope. Actually, I really don't know. I think there's probably a chance that it's not even like the Cold Adams, but it definitely looks like it in it. Has a similar texture to the Coldenoms uh, when I tasted it. 
Uh, Nefiach is a pretty underrated and under talked about fig. I don't know why. This is a French fig from Bode. Highly, highly recommend that you look at this. Um, see if you can find it. It's difficult to find, but it's well worth it. The Negra de Agde, another one I'm trying to find or trying to look forward to, to more of them. Um, it did actually fruit it this year, but it was too late. And I think the squirrels even got it, unfortunately. But this is a fig that a lot of people are raving about. My friend uh, Jamie, Danny, uh, definitely has a high quality. I've actually tasted it before at one of the Staten Island events um, a couple years ago. The Negrette de Porca Rolls. Uh, this one is very interesting as well, but I don't know what the overall shape is going to be like on that one, but it should taste quite good. And I'm looking forward to it for that reason. The Nin V and the Nin ZS, these are figs that, again, are very tasty. I think the Nin ZS really has some potential to be in the running for the Cold Doms as well. Um, I think that fig is, is also, it's really, really early, I was told. So not only is it stupidly early, but it has a Cold Dom like quality to it. And that's like unbelievable it's one of the earliest figs this nin zs so i'm going to be talking about that one i'm sure this upcoming season noir de Boulogne. i mean it's literally one of the best tasting figs in the world not talked about really at all um great texture great size great fruit quality has great attributes to it across the board um in every respect it should do well here let's keep going Nuestra Senora del Carmen. It's got a great reputation for flavor now. Uh, looking forward to that one. Palmares. It's got decent drying capabilities to it. We're looking forward to that. And if I go over here, we can take a look at a photo of it. This is a Portuguese fig. That's right. More flat, more Urciolato, but good drying capabilities, which is a really good sign. And this is one of the best tasting figs in Portugal um, that doesn't need pollination. A lot of them are good tasting in Portugal that need pollination, unfortunately. Or the pollination dramatically changes the flavor. That one, I think, has got really good potential to it. Parrot Jolina, this is another one that people are don't, I just, I don't get it. They're not really paying attention if you're trying to find something good. Parajolina is the more rain resistant, more split resistant version of Parajal Ramada. And Parajal Ramada is a really highly flavored fig. You can see here, there's not a whole lot of difference. You can read about it. It's, uh, he says right here, it's like a sub variety of Parajal or Parajal Ramada. Um, widely grown fig should do really well here. Well, actually not really well here, but better than um, Parajal Ramada and Parajal, that's for sure. Uh, just read through his book. You know, you get to find all the answers out just in his book. Pew Fine, uh, really great tasting fig, I'm sure. It has a great, obviously should have a good skin to it, but it really ha should have a high flavor to it. I'm really looking forward to tasting that one. It's one of my more older trees that hasn't fruited. It really does need that light penetration. Pecciolo Bianco. This is a really, I'm looking forward to this one probably more than the majority of them. Like 90% of the other ones, as I said. This has got good drying capabilities, a good shape, good flavor. It should have the whole total package. Really, really looking forward to that fig. Um, Parola, this one is one is one from Harvey that comes from Portugal. Um, that without a doubt has got some really high flavor to it. Um, a couple of my friends have reviewed this. For whatever reason, they're not so keen on the production on it. But again, I think that's related to the light. So maybe I can change that around. I have a couple copies of this because I know how good it's going to be. It's one of the best tasting figs for sure. Uh, Piazzetta, we talked about Pachotto. This is a 
I thought it was going to be similar to Verdino del Nord, but it's it's not. And again, it's got the drying capabilities, similar shape, similar size, I should say, but it's not. It doesn't look exactly like Verdino del Nord to me. This pulp pattern is quite different. It seems more elongated in shape. I don't know, but whatever it is, it looks really good, and I'm really looking forward to this fig. I know it sets pretty easily, I think, and it seems relatively productive slash vigorous, so it should be a good producer. Pissoludo is probably in the you know in the top ten percent of the varieties I'm looking forward to as well. Stupidly underrated fig that nobody seems to care about. Well, you guys are gonna find out next year. I got a number of them, different sources. Uh, it's a super, super good fig that is all over Italy. Uh, there's even a Pissoluto Nero. It's a, it really is though, this one, a white fig with a red interior. It's really yellow. It's a yellow skin fig with a, with a red interior. And, uh, you know, amazing actually really good fruit quality to it. And it does perform well, by the way, in Florida, even my friend, Frank, was raving about it in Florida. Um, let's continue on here. Ponte Tresa, I want to see more of it. It's starting to finally come into its own. It's taken forever, but it's finally doing it. Let's see here. Princessa has got an interesting texture to it, I was told. A lot of respected fig growers love it for that reason. Uh, big honey fig with an interesting texture to it. And it seems more jelly-like to me so far what I've been able to, to ascertain from the from eating it myself. Recover, this is also in that Grease de Saint Jean trial. It is a Grease de Saint Jean strain. Regatta Rosa A. This one may be very late. I may even have it in the greenhouse, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely one to look forward to in terms of that awesome eating experience. I think it may even be a Ramada fig. Rissoulette, another black-skinned fig uh, from Thierry that uh, looks pretty promising as well. Who knows? I think that one may have drying capabilities too. I'm, I'm probably probably mixing this up with a Wren. But let's look at Rissoulette. Yeah, this has got good shape. It's not drying, but it is shriveling. So it's got shriveling capabilities, but... It looks really good. Dries easily, it says. Okay. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Rosa Esmeralda. We're looking forward to that one. Uh, similar to LDA, but it's supposed to be better, according to my friend Carla. So looking forward to that for sure. We got Rosalino. I love that fig. Rosa Dagoni, also looking forward to that. It's also purple on the inside. Salato, we talked about. San Baggio, still haven't fruited it, but it grew and it finally got itself really well established. Uh, should be a phenomenal fig. The cherry flavor, it's early. Um, yeah, can't say enough about it coming from uh, Paolo Bologna. Very, very rare, too. Uh, let's see here. St. Augusti looks quite promising, but I don't think it might perform well that here. Let's, let's check it out again. I think it's got a bad shape to it. No, this looks decent, but some of them are on the flatter side. Yeah. So if they're quite flat, this one's, this one wouldn't do here, this shape here, but Maybe a shape like this fig would do well, or this fig would do well. Maybe this one here would do well. Some of these are very flat, and therefore I don't have as much hope. But other than that, it seems actually pretty good for the fruit quality, and it looks like it um, doesn't split all that often, doesn't crack all that often. So I don't know. We really don't know anything about that, unfortunately. Looking forward to Safari. This is uh, in the 
the running against Brooklyn White and White Triana to see if it will do well here, perform well on the ground, has good fruit quality, et cetera, et cetera. It, this is from Bass, and this is a Middle Eastern fig, so hope I'm proven wrong with those Middle Eastern varieties. Sementino Rosso. Um, I don't know where I can find a photo of this guy here, but it's got, I think more of a black mission style to it it's more elongated it's a dark fig um, red to, to purple to black red interior very very good um, this is a fig that's grown a, pretty widely over italy we got sister madeline's yellow um, also against white triana and brooklyn white and safari it's a similar fig to those but it seems more elongated in shape. And I got to try one that was actually really well ripened by Karen in New York City. She brought one to a gathering that I was at, got to taste it, and it was one of the best figs I've had in this climate. So really respectable variety, and I hope it can continue with that, with that shape and with those drying capabilities because then it'll just be way better I really need to put one of them in the ground, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. It's really where it's going to have its best, um, you know, best performance. And I think the shape could potentially change if you have it in a pot versus in the ground. So I don't know. We're going to find out. I really should look into the, more about that fig. Here we have uh, Socorro Black. Let's see. I've already fruited plenty of Socorro Blacks. Looking forward to more of them though. E, let's see here. Actually, I sold my Socorro Black. But we still have um, Borgia Soak Grease, which is very similar, and Violet Support. Let's keep going. Texas BA1, this is a Smith strain very similar to smith but different um i have it in the ground and it's unprotected it's unpruned and it's getting through the winter time so far so high hopes for that and to see that fruit would be really awesome to have a tree that is reasonably hardy that's very similar to smith because smith is just not a very hardy variety i really want to put that debate to rest the comparison between the two, at least in my mind, I know that they are different. Uh, my friends have definitely told me that, and I believe them without a doubt. Uh, let's see here. Texas peach. This is like a Celeste styled fig, but it's not really a Celeste. It's very quite different. Um, Wills is a big proponent of that one, and. I think it's got a lot of potential here with the shape, the rain resistance, the split resistance, the um, the fruit quality should be reasonable. Uh, we'll see. Tolosa, this is a fig I really want to see it mature quickly because it's got some huge potential to it. I think it's probably one of the better figs that I've acquired. Um, so looking forward to this one more than 90% of the other varieties. Great shape. It's got that pyroform shape to it. It's got a decent neck with a decent stem, giving it more of a pyroform or even a voidal shape. So it won't split. It's going to do well with the rain. Um, great fruit quality, obviously, but it, he says here it takes a while for it to produce high quality fruits. So it takes a couple years. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's, it's also one of the most um, vigorous and productive varieties I have. It's kind of incredible, actually, how ridiculously that, that combo goes together. It's vigorous and productive, easy to set fruit. It should be a winner. I have no doubts. Um, Unghiarolo, this is another Italian fig people don't seem to pay much attention to. Very early. Um it's finally getting established in the ground for me, so I might get to try it this season. Unfortunately, I haven't really had much growth on it just yet, but it's getting itself there. 
We also have here the, let's see, Vagabond. This one reminds me a little bit of Violet de Bordeaux, but I'm pretty sure it's quite different. And a dark skinned red interior fig. Highly, highly recommend um, to try that one for anybody interested out there. Uh, it's hard to find though, so. Um, yeah, let's see here. We got Vertal Long. I think it was Vertal Long. Maybe not DN Amaros, but Vertal Long. Reminds me of De La Senora Hibernanka. Yes, this looks like for an exact match of De La Senora Hibernanka. Um, not the DN Amaros. You could tell by the cracking, the color of the skin. It's got that purple blush to it. It's half green, half purple. This shape, the neck, the stem. But that cracking is a dead giveaway. Um, red pulp. Very tasty fig, jammy, rich. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I don't, you know, I think I've already tried it, essentially. The Dian Amoros is, is definitely different. Let's see, what else? There's so many figs. The Verdino del Nord Tatiana. Looking forward to trying that one. I've had it for quite a few years, and it's on that Marala rootstock, guys. It just struggles. Um, Vertolino we talked about. Verdone really impressed me this year. This is actually a black-skinned red interior fig that originally comes from Nikki, And, you know, he definitely, without a doubt, um, has a little bit of a gem here that no one really knows about. It's got a lot of potential. Um, great shape. It's an oval. Beautiful fig. It's beautiful it's stunning um very soft though but the skin is uh velvety um good flavor to it let's see what else we got here Rodino giacomo talked about let's keep going down violet patlican i think that's a match for Socorro black and Bo violet support board to soak grease i don't know for sure but if I had to put money on it, I would say it's the same damn thing. Let's see. Violet de Marseille. That's one of those blue Celeste types we're interested in trying more of. White Madeira number one. I really want to try more fruits of that. It's really get a good idea of the flavor. It's very good. I'm sure. I mean, a lot of people rave about it. My friend Raphael loves it. So how could you not appreciate it? So let's see here. What else? We're getting down here to the end. Uh, Andata, I'm not too high on. I know Bill is, but it looked more like a brown turkey to me. Prosciutto. Uh, this is a Adriatic type that looks quite interesting. LSU Scott's yellow. Could be more of an improvement to LSU Huye. I think that one really does have some potential, without a doubt. Uh, let's see here. Mala Vermella. This one is quite interesting. That friend of mine five miles away grows. This is a Pons fig. Great shape. Should have a good flavor to it. Maybe mid to late season. Um, again, got good rain resistance because of this shape. Should be a really good choice for this climate. One to, one to trial for sure. Feather River, I hope that one's common. We also have Sarda. This is another Col de Dom type from Ponds. Maybe not the prettiest looking fig, but certainly has that really thick pulp if you read his description this here it looks like a cold and grease or a cold and roja look how gray that is in the shape and the neck really good choice pyroform good rain resistance split resistance hopefully we hear more about it moscatel bronco is another fig that actually i believe it or not i'm looking forward to quite a bit 
Um, it's got the elongated shape that we look for. It's a it's actually a very common fig. It it uh, goes by another name called uh, Gota de Mel. And this one I found in Pons' book and then realized I wanted to find this, but then I realized I actually have something just like it in the form of Moscatel Bronco. You can see a long neck, pyroform shape, very short stem, amber pulp. If I look down here, amber pulp, long neck, very short stem. This is just one of those strains that people often refer to as like maybe a Dotato type or one of these just honey figs. This is one of those honey fig gems that I've been looking for. One of these honey figs that does well in the rain. And uh, I don't know why it took me so long. Once we figured out which shape to look for, it just got, it just got a lot easier. Um, and then the last fig here, which in all honesty, very, very, very excited to look at and try is the Old de Purdue which does remind me quite a bit of um, almost like a Verdino del Nord. We'll have to find out. Um, I'm not going to say it's the same. I doubt it's the same, but it definitely looks quite similar. Uh, the leaves look very similar. It's got a red eye to it, which is uh, a decent indicator. Smaller size, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in the book, it has decent drying capabilities. Let's let me try it really quickly. Let me look at the book. This is why it's important to have the book, guys. This is the Bible, basically, of all the Spanish fig varieties. And all the Spanish fig varieties are very tasty. Well, not all of them, but some of them are quite tasty. So if you're serious, you should definitely look for this book. Here it is. Old de Purdue. Since we can't read Spanish, we have it here in English. Let's see here. The taste is a little sweet, it says. Small size. Your Ciolato. Let's see here. Small internal cavity. Does, does Virginia Del Nord doesn't have any cavity, actually. Cracks, very scarce. That would be true. The cracks are very scarce. Um, pink eye. Utilizations for dried and fresh. So it has drying potential um, vigor is medium yield is high indeterminate okay different varieties of the same name as older Purdue according to the area where it's cultivated so that's a sign I forgot this fig is all over Spain by the name older Purdue doesn't mean it's the actual older Purdue that Pons has but there's a lot of them that go by the same name Medium vigor, dense branches, quite thick foliage. Yep, sounds like Verdino del Nord. The annual shoot growth is rather short. Medium harvest period produces Brabas. So Verdino del Nord also Brabas. Good quantities are not considered by fair tree. Your a little pyroform, large and yellowish green in color. So now it says large. So if it's large, then it's not that at all. It says, though, longitudinal, thick, very slightly marked, variable in dimension, symmetric in shape. Very fine, and the pulp is a pearly orange. Not too sweet, but juicy. Medium-sized acnes. Pink eye. Eye of a partridge. Hmm. Higher percentage of a couple of fruits, 8 to 10%. Resistant to rain and dew, medium, medium resistant to transport, very resistant to the opening of the eye, and very susceptible to detachment. Oh, okay, so this doesn't sound right at all. Yeah, so older Purdue, variety is known and cultivated in many places on the island. It owes its name, as we mentioned, to the presence of the red 
um, eye and a distal pore, which represents the eye of a partridge. And I actually just acquired a variety that's literally called eye of partridge. So we'll find out if it's similar to Old de Purdue or not, but um, interesting, right? I think actually Brian found the eye of partridge and then messaged Pons, and Pons believes it could be Old de Purdue at least. So interesting. Anyway, this fig's really good, without a doubt. Um, yeah, I think it's got a decent shape to it, good rain resistance, as mentioned. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. should have a good flavor to it. So that was the video here, guys. I hope that everybody enjoyed this little one. Um, yeah, definitely not a little one. It's quite long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty insane, you know, how many new ones are coming that we just talked about. But I've also acquired quite a few new varieties that we'll talk about next year. So this whole thing continues. You know, it's never done, it seems like. But uh, we're going to keep finding good figs, that's for sure. And yeah. So anyway, guys, I hope to see everybody soon um, in the next video. All right? Take care, guys. Have a good one. I hope everybody's staying safe, all right? Peace.